In this module, we talk software. This is the Filmmaker's Boot Camp, and you're at the Indie Lot, where it's film school for the rest of us. Let's jump into Blender. Here is the default load-up screen. And uh, Blender, I mean, you can configure Blender any way you want, but they have a set of screens um, that they've already set up and, and um, configured for us that we can just choose. This is the default screen that you're looking at right now. From here, you could, you know, add lights, cameras, more objects, and go into edit mode and start 3D modeling. Uh, from this screen here. There's a game logic screen where you can do your game development, motion tracking. This is a, a screen here that you would use for a lot of your, your film post-production tasks, such as capturing camera movements of, you know, a, a way to track markers in your footage and have your footage regenerate virtual cameras that moved exactly like your real camera. And then that way you can composite into it CG effects, explosions, and you know, things like that. Scripting I haven't used too much, but uh, Blender supports the Python scripting language. Uh, there may be others it supports, I'm not sure. Uh, so, but if you're a Python programmer, you can actually get in and, and write code uh, to modify Blender and or to modify the projects that you're working on. I've done very little, I, I know some Python. Uh, I am a software developer, but I haven't used Python as much. But when I was doing game-based training development, I used some Python to program some of my gaming components. The UV editor, this is for laying your textures and things like that over your models. And then here's the one we're mostly concerned about right here, and that's the video editing screen. So I'm going to go ahead and jump straight to here. Now these are channels within the video editor, and to add a, a movie, for example, or audio, I'm going to hit Shift A while hovering. When you execute keyboard commands, it's going to affect the object you're hovering over. So I have my mouse over the timeline. I'm going Shift A, and now I'm going to scroll down here, and I'm going to choose movie. You can see I have an add menu here, and I'm going to choose movie, okay? Now, under here, under these bookmarks, you can see I have a, a folder already bookmarked called Lab 1. I'm going to click on that, and you can see now Blender loads a library, if you will, of my video clips I want to use. Now, looking at it in this way, it's very difficult to see what these movies are. So up here, there's a set of icons that can, you can use to change your view. So if I click on that one there, it will show me my footage in thumbnails. And then I can just go about choosing and selecting uh, whatever clip that I want to add to my timeline. So I'm going to grab, uh, for example, 5867 here. So let me find it, 5867. So I'm just going to highlight that. I can either double click it or highlight it and hit Add Movie Strip. You can see now Blender deposits it into the, the, the timeline, and I can then scrub through it. I can grab my scrubbing tool from here. In this window here, you can see the actual footage. Now that's a little bit small, so using my mouse wheel, I'm gonna go ahead and just make it a little larger. In in DaVinci Resolve and HitFilm, you know, you can just click on things and grab it. Not so in Blender. Blender's interface, it's a it's very, very different from other interfaces you've used. Now people have complained about that, but I've used Blender for years, and once you get used to the interface, once you start to learn how to move around and do things, uh, it becomes very intuitive to you. It becomes second nature. Okay, but it is a very different way of, of working. So I can right click to select. If I hold the control key down, I can right click and select the second layer or second clip there. A, I can deselect and, re, and then A again to select all. If I deselect and I hit the B key, it gives me what's called a box select. I can just drag that box select over to things I want to to, to move or, or affect. And then if I want to move this, what I have to do is I have to hit the G key. So I, I can't really right click and do anything with this to move it. Um, I have to I hit the G key and now I can move it up and down or side to side. Um, if I left mouse click, it will accept the movement that I've made. Right mouse click will just undo the movement and put it back to where it was. So again, I don't want to spend a ton of time on this. And actually, I'm just not going to spend very much time on this. I'm going to grab one more movie clip here. Let's just grab, I don't know, this one right here. So wherever your, your, your scrubber is, 
is where it's going to insert your movie clip, okay? And so there's, you know, different kinds of effects that are built into Blender that you can fade and crossfade between these things. Okay, again, this is not a tutorial on how to use Blender or even necessarily how to edit in Blender, but I just wanted you to see a little bit of the interface uh, because we're going to get really into editing when we start talking about DaVinci Resolve. Music